Galaxy Surfactants, the leading oleochemical maker, posted a relatively steady quarter with positive volume growth and also improving margin profile. In our ideas for profit today, I'll discuss if the surge in the personal hygiene demand could be a game changer for the company going forward. Well, let's look at the earnings first. Now, net sales had declined 3.7% year on year because of the low product prices, which was again due to the pass of uh, pass-through effect of the lower raw material costs. Now, standalone revenue numbers were definitely weaker, wherein the revenue declined by 12% and was definitely impacted by the lockdown. Now, in terms of volume growth, it was marginally positive, benefiting from the 3.2% growth in performance surfactants, which was again offset by the 2.7% degrowth in the specialty care. Gross margins had improved by 474 basis points due to the slump in the prices of the key raw material, laurel alcohol, and a better management of the product prices. Now, EBITDA margin expansion was relatively moderate at 251 basis points, mainly due to the higher other expenses. Now, EBITDA per ton also had improved by, say, 7% on a year-on-year -year basis and net profit thereof uh, jumped sharply due to the tax savings as uh, the adoption of the lower income tax rate of the India business happened. Now, company is a key beneficiary of the surge in the health and the hygiene awareness. Demand for floor cleaning, dish washing, toilets, personal wash should remain elevated even in the near term. So the volume growth in the performance segment or the performance surfactant segment is expected to be steadier. Having said that, lower discretionary spending can definitely impact the portfolio. Now, competitive intensity is high and it remains to be really seen if the company is able to edge out the marginal or the unorganized players. Also, the sales of specialty care products used in the beauty and the personal care products is also likely to remain soft for the next six to nine months. Now, other uh, near-term hit, uh, particularly when you talk of the Q1 quarter, is the recent blast in the Tarapur plant, which actually contributes 8 to 10 percent sales volume mainly for the specialty care products. Now, management has already said that the plant and also the production losses are uh, covered under insurance, and the company has also commenced production after all the necessary regulatory permissions had been taken. As far as the margins are concerned now, low cost raw material advantage may not sustain as it really has to be eventually passed on to the consumers. Hence, we continue to expect an EBITDA margin in the range of 12 to 13% in the medium term. Now again, over a long term, the management remains quite confident about the specialty portfolio's growth prospects. The company also has a CAPEX plan worth about 600 crore rupees, that's for the medium term. Also, company's debt to equity ratio of uh, 0.4 times and free cash flow run rate of 150 crore rupees per annum provides a sufficient room to fund the capex. Over the longer term, we do remain positive of the company's dominant market share, the strategic partnership with MNC clients, also R&D focus, and a strong hold on the personal care end user market, which makes it a defensive bet in the entire chemical industry. Now, we do take note of the company's growing exposure to uh, FMCG startups, which are also taking advantage of the increasing acceptability of e-commerce, at least in the times of COVID-19. Now, the stock trades uh, at a multiple of 20 times estimated earnings for FY22 and also enterprise value at 12.8 times estimated EBITDA for FY22. Now, these are elevated when you compare it with the multiples or the median multiples of the chemical sector. So, hence, uh, investors should really uh, wait for the lower levels to actually get constructive on the stock going forward from here.